the last lecture of influence line diagram. In this lecture, we are going to see about an influence line diagram for this stress for the uh, diagonal member. Now, we know that the diagonal member will be sometimes in compression and sometimes in tension. But let's see how ILD can uh, explain this parameter. So, uh, let's start with the very first thing that is choosing of the section. As I said that the very first criteria is minimum three members, sorry, maximum three members should be cut and the member which is of interest should be cut. So I cut the section like this, x x. Now the second criteria was the other two unwanted members should meet at a joint. But in this case, even though I am interested in this member, the other two members do not meet at a joint. But still I have considered this section is because when I will be solving this problem, I won't be taking submission of movement about any joint as zero. I will be basically taking the assumption of vertical as zero. So even though these two members do not, do not meet, it doesn't bother me. So let's start with the procedure. Before we start, I always try to simplify the problem by taking the section separate. So you can go with the right or the left. I'm, I'm just taking randomly as the uh, the left left section as the diagram. So the left section is like this. These members are not cut, so they remain intact. No forces are released from these members. This also remains intact. This is released, that is FL2U3. This is released, that is FL2L3. And this is released, that is FU2U3. Now, this is my section XX. So, let's go again step by step. So, just take care that this is 5 meter, this is 5 meter. And uh, uh, you can calculate this angle theta. That comes out to be, so you calculate this theta, that is 10 inverse of 6 by 5. So you have 50.19. So uh, you have this angle is similar to this angle. So you have theta as 50.19. So now let's start with the very first point that is apply unit load. At, see, I'm not putting unit load at u0 because it's again a reaction. We have seen in the previous videos that if the load comes in the reaction, there is no forces generated on the members. So I'm just directly putting on u1. Now, if I have a load at u1, this is my load here, one kilo newton, and this is my reaction R u0. Suppose so, I am interested in calculating the reaction first. So I take R u0 into I am taking the moment about this joint so that this reaction becomes 0, 5, 10, 15 into 20 minus, my load is here, right, 1 kilo newton. So minus 1 into 5, 10, 15 is equal to 0. This gives me a value of 15 by 20, that is 0.75, that is 3 by 4. So R u naught is equal to 3 by 4. Now, if I know this value, now what I will do is, I will take the summation of vertical. Why? Because I am interested in this force. If I take moment about this joint or this joint, the joint U3, minus becomes 0. I don't want that. So I take just summation of vertical of upward positive equal to 0. I have FL2 U3. S uh, yeah, it's sin theta taking downwards. So I'm taking this as negative. What else? This 1 is there. So that is downward minus 1. This is positive. So plus 3 by 4 equal to 0. So this gives me a value of minus 1 plus 3 by 4 divided by sine of 50.19. So please note that this value is fl 2 u 3 is plus 0.325. Okay? So that is one thing. Then I keep the load at the second load, second location. Apply at, I apply at u2. So when I apply at u2, this load moves and this reaction changes. Now, uh, if you can see, the load has moved out of the section. Sorry, it's still inside. Sorry, one kilo newton. U two is still inside. U two is still inside. So now, what is uh, the reaction here? It is five, ten, fifteen, twenty again. So R U naught into twenty minus one into now here. So load is here one kilo newton. One into ten is equal to zero. So ten by twenty R U naught become one by two. So this value is now 1 by 2. If this is 1 by 2 and this is 1, I can write 1 by, again, minus FL2 U3 sin theta plus 
1 by 2 minus 1 equal to 0. So 0 0.5 minus 1 divided by sine of 50.19 gives me again a minus of, sorry, again a plus of 0 0.625. So till here I am getting a plus sign. Keep this thing in mind. Then after this when I come to the third joint that is apply at U3. You see the load has moved from the joint. Now it's it's outside the section but here I still need the reaction. What is the reaction this time? It's RC into 20 minus 1 into 5. So you get 5 by 20 that is the value is 1 by 4. You get 1 by 4 again summation of vertical will be minus FL2 U3 sine of theta plus what, what is the value? 1 by 4. Anything else? No, because the 1 has moved outside the section. So your value is 1 by 4 divided by sine of 50.19 that gives you a value of minus 0.325. So, after doing this, I just erase this portion. We can now very easily plot the ILD for this. How will be the ILD? If I keep it uh, like this. So it's said that here the value, see, I'm taking downward as uh, tension and upward as compression. So I take this value as, I don't remember the values which came, 0.325. Then the next value was 0.65. So it increases like this 0.625. And then it becomes a positive. So somewhere here it changes its sign, becomes positive, and then it is zero here. So this is what the ILD for FL2U3 will look like. Now, in this itself, I just uh, I hope you understood this thing. In this itself, I just tell one more thing that the diagonal member means when the load is here and here, it remains in compression. When the load moves to this location, it becomes tension. Imagine when the load is acting here, it tries to pull the member. That's why this member becomes in tension, whereas when if the load is here, it remains in compression. In this problem only, I'll just show one more thing. If somebody asks you what is the ILD for L2U2, please know that L2U2 is a zero force member right now. But if any load comes over this 1 kN, it will generate a force of 1.0 kN. Whereas if the load moves at any other location, it becomes a zero force member and that's why its ILD will be like this. So this is also an ILD for a zero force member that I have explained in this. Now in the last video we will see some of the quick problems on ILD and uh, how to solve the problems using the concept of Müller-Biscoe principle.